there we are. Well, I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit down. I got a little bit of a thing going in my throat, a little bit of an itch, a little bit of drainage going, but still feeling pretty good. I felt like bringing y'all, I guess, like a bonus video because it's Saturday. had some good ideas floating around plus weather is pretty and the main thing I wanted to really talk about while it was on my mind I had a uh, meeting with a friend from college last night catching up and we kind of just you know we're talking about real estate and investments and plans and I guess with that, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about this book uh, by Robert Kiyosaki that I've read. It's a little bit older, and he makes a lot of predictions for 2000, like the decade of 2010 to 2020, a lot of which um, have not come to fruition, but now are being touted by the likes of uh, Ray Dalio, for instance, with his book, Economics, or uh, Principles for D Dealing with the Changing World Order, and it's just very interesting how Kiyosaki um, basically said what Dalio is saying now about China is on is on the precipice, and, and um, you know, it kind of gave credence to something that I thought along the line, well, that I heard anyway, I, I had brought up Ray Dalio's book to my dad, and went through briefly what he had said and his posit um, basically that China's taking over and he was like oh I've been hearing that since the 70s and I didn't really think anything of it other than uh, you know yeah sure but then now that I actually read Kiyosaki's book and see that he's done the same thing um, kind of kind of solidified it for me because it is true that people are always going to be screaming that the sky is falling and we really truly don't know what the future holds I mean in the investment world one of the things that we have to say and put on a lot of marketing materials is, you know, past performance is not indicative of future results. And the same thing can be said for the rule of a nation and the reign of a nation. I do agree with a lot of those arguments and I'm just playing a little bit as devil's advocate because I do think that you know with the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset and you know the globalization of all of the industries that we have that it's it's a little inevitable that we will see the major global economic players come to uh, equal sort of rain, but I don't think that that means that there's going to be a quote-unquote new world order in the sense of what Dalio is talking about, that there's going to be a top dog. I think that, that there's going to be four or five top dogs, and they're all going to be extremely regulated by a global organization. And we don't need to, I guess the ultimate, the pin ultimate point, you know, argument that I'm making here is that we don't know what the future holds and I don't think that it, we need to worry ourselves with economic collapse in America. I think that we need to stay on top of the issues and keep talking about the issues and discuss things such as the weakening of our education system, the weakening of our military, and I do think that we need to remain vigilant 
and keep those things as strong as possible because those are what's going to protect our nation and make our nation great. in the long run and it's what has in the past and it's what will do so in the future because even though the world that we're in now is very peaceful relative to times in the past as far as war is concerned there's a lot of social aggression I think in today's day and age, but I think on a global scale and far and away on a war scale and a human rights scale, we are a lot better off. So... I don't think that... I think that we need to keep those things, you know, at the top of the list, but again, I can see how they've weakened and those institutions have gotten worse over time. And it is concerning and it should be concerning, but, you know, we need to look at it in the sense of you can't slide the dials in the ultimate direction for maximum outcome. can't be agile and burly and strong at the same time. There's a trade-off, and I think that if we're going to focus on anything, we need to focus on the education system, and that involves looking at sort of what safe spaces and, you know, the feelings, and we need to just really have a come to Jesus meeting with ourselves about it because why are people wasting their time worried about how people feel? I mean, do you think that the greats of the past cared about how they felt in times of struggle? This is, especially now, on the precipice of where we are as a civilization, no time to worry about how we feel. We have to struggle and we have to get better. And we have to fail forward and we have to struggle well, you know? And people are so concerned about how they feel and how they're being treated. And I think that, you know, one of the things that, like, really bothers me that's, like, my big pet peeve is is when I'm out driving and I'm a more... I have an agile car. I don't have a heavy vehicle that that is slow to speed up. You know, I don't have a massive truck or SUV. I have an agile midsize, um, mid-size vehicle that has a good get up and go, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have like a whole lot of power or anything like that. And so sometimes like I can do things that other drivers cannot, uh, or sometimes there's just rules of the road. Like they're not necessarily laws, but they're just kind of common, commonalities. Uh, you know, when, when it's like, it's acceptable to generally drive 10 miles over the speed limit, but if everyone's going 20 miles over the speed limit, it's actually proven to be much safer to quote unquote, go with the flow of the rest of traffic. Um, or for instance, you know, one of the stories that really still makes me, my blood boil a little bit was this one time I was traveling to uh, Mississippi to visit with a fraternity brother and um, I, we were on a highway and most people who are in their right mind, I think know that 
that the hash marks mean you're allowed to pass. And this person was going their speed and there was a length of cars behind them, about five or six cars in length. And I just so happened to be the second or third back, like immediately behind them or third behind them. And there was a long stretch of highway with the hash marks that gave me the ability to pass by law. And so I did. And when I passed the first car, everything went fine, whatever. I had to merge in front as per law. And then I had the opportunity to go in front of the person leading the pack. This person sped up so that I couldn't pass them and actually almost ran me off the road because I don't know why. I, I, I guess because they didn't know the law, but more or less what I'm getting at is my big pet peeve is when people want to impose their will onto other people. And there is situations when it's called for, like when, you know, we have to send somebody to prison uh, because someone would get harmed or injured or killed otherwise, right? So if we send a pedophile, a rapist, a murderer, a serial killer, whatever, if we send them to jail or prison and impose society's will upon that person, that is one thing because we are preventing a greater evil. And a lot of laws are written for such the same reason. But if people are going to impose their will on other people because the emotional harm that that individual feels is greater, is, is valid even as physical harm or, or equates to greater than physical harm and we impose our will in that manner, we're in deep trouble as a society because then anybody can get away with almost anything at any point. And that's, that's not a good, good route to go down. And there's really no such thing as actual social justice. And so being a social justice warrior is championing, championing, championing a route that is non-existent, really. Do you think that your great, great grandparents who were serving in the military fighting to help free Jews from Hitler and help them escape from concentration camps cared about how they felt? No, they certainly didn't. Do you think that northern soldiers fighting for the freedom of slaves cared about how they felt? No. They cared about people imposing their will on other people in a bad way that was going to cause harm, which was slavery. And they didn't care that it was uncomfortable or it was unfair that they had to go fight or blah, blah, blah. They did it for the greater good. And imposing your will on somebody else and fighting for that because of how someone feels or how it makes you feel because your feelings get hurt, you're taking the low road. And Sun Tzu's Art of War talks about high ground versus low ground. You should always take the high ground. And if you keep taking the low road, the high road, the high ground will overtake you. They have a better vantage point and they will outlast. And we're seeing that a lot now, but we just, you know, I just, 
wanted to, to kind of talk about that in the sense of it's, it's, it's just important that our school systems and our higher education centers become, get back to having integrity, you know, because they've lost their integrity and they've lost their credibility. They're, they've lost their credibility. And so that's why you have books that come out like this with guys like this that talk about how college is basically moot now. College is a waste of money. And unless you're going to get some kind of vocational training, such as to become a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist or a veterinarian, you know, it's necessary in that manner because you have to establish the the habits I guess you know you have to establish the fundamentals of being able to write well to do mathematics at a higher level uh, and more importantly you need to develop time management skills time blocking skills and there's a lot to be said for undergraduate study uh, that helps with that it will help make you a better doctor, better lawyer, better dentist, better small business owner in that regard. And the higher education system has gotten so bloated, it's cranking out useless degrees and it's ivory tower stuff and it's these intellectuals that ponder on things and they build on other intellectuals ideas that really it's it's like they remove themselves further and further from society they they find something that they like and they stay in that echo chamber and they build on it because it's their buddy their other professor buddy or their you know men's rights activist buddy and uh, they're going to build on that and it's wonderful that we live in a society where we have the protection from evil that allows us to do that but this is the same thing that collapsed societies in the past they get too too inner tumultuous and it brings them down, it implodes them. So let's just uh, let's just focus on on getting back to the basics in a lot of ways. And I think that you know we've really left behind some of the trades and we've sacrificed solid work ethic for because we've pedestalized intellectuals and we've pedestalized ivory tower jobs. And the truth is, is I, I've been in that world and it's not, it's not all it's cracked up to be. You're going to make a far greater amount of money working with your hands and doing an actual craft, a physical trade than you ever will working behind a computer uh, and teaching classes and things like that. Now, that's not to demean any of those uh, positions because there's always going to be a need for people to handle payroll and navigate tax code and teach students the basics and the core necessities of math and accounting etc. But some of these superfluous classes and degrees are just not, not, are not necessary and they're not needed and they're, they're harming rather than helping um, because there is no real world need. When I'm out making business deals or 
looking at a company to invest in. I don't really care about how many people have training in this or that kind of social justice, this whatever. You know, the only color capitalism truly cares about is the color green. And it cares about profit. And the culture is going to be separate from that and culture will always be separate from that and that's an important thing to you know work to live instead of live to work and if capitalism got its way everyone would live at work and that's a dangerous road and that we need to be aware of but we also need to understand that from an evolutionary standpoint, the hunter-gatherer society hardware that we have ingrained in us, it's the people of the tribe that didn't contribute that starved and didn't pass on their genes. And there's still an ability and it becomes easier and easier to do the larger and more interconnected society gets, um, especially with social programs that almost, you know, incentivize in a negative way not working, you know. So just need to be very, very careful about where we are headed as a society so that we don't implode on ourselves so I know I got off topic I was actually gonna entitle this video you know a book review of unfair advantage but it looks like that's not gonna happen um, yeah there he's talking about the war of money LLC's and how to structure things people become wealthy during financial collapses I've got this thing tabbed up to heaven and past Avalon, honestly. So there's all kinds of stuff to go back and, and look through and highlight it. So keep reading, keep studying, better yourselves, and just know that college isn't always the answer. It doesn't need to be the answer. In fact, a lot of people are, are showing that the next financial bubble to collapse is going to be the college debt bubble. And I would say signs of that happening are the fact that they are starting to forgive student loan debt in mass. And that goes right, around, right along with Ray Dalio's book, you know, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order and how debt is going to be forgiven. So whether we, t whether we talk about the, you know, you will own nothing and be happy and all of that forgiving debt is kind of what they talk about being part of it and, uh, you know, being beholden to somebody um, else. So you know, before you let your student loan debt just be taken away, check out the contract. What, what are you signing? What's that look like? And, um, you know, what are the stipulations behind it? I think that technology has really given rise to a lot of good things and the ability to do a lot. And part of that is, you know, having access to information. In fact, we have access to too much information. And it's hard to weed through it all, but, you know, you can go to MIT's website and Harvard's website and very, a lot of university websites and access past lectures that have been uploaded online and learn and teach yourself. And I think that's important. I think that's an important tool to have. And so that's why I think that like books like this, while they are good, um, 
they're, they're a little too seething in their, in their judgment of university education. You know, there's a lot, there's a couple of things in this book that I absolutely do not agree with on any level. And it's one thing that I think actually goes to show you that you can become incredibly rich and wealthy without being smart. You can sort of be intelligent and copy what other rich people do. And yeah, it doesn't take a lot to be rich, you know? And I think that when I write my book one day, I am going to talk about the difference between being rich and wealthy. And I think if I haven't done a video on it, I need to, but I'm pretty sure I've already done a video on it about the differences of being rich and wealthy. And it's very much a mindset. And while it might be nice to be rich and it might be nice to have a Ferrari and a Porsche and a Cadillac and a, you know, whatever car you want, those are just more liabilities. But being wealthy, that mindset is being happy and content with what you have and finding happiness in other ways. So there's a whole depth that's missed when all you do is chase gold and chase riches. And I've, I have friends who have actually met Robert Kiyosaki and he's very, very pompous and vapid. And that's, that's one of the side effects of, of focusing too much on, on shiny objects, uh, and not focusing on true human nature and what makes us human. Because again, our world is a very novel world and we're sold a package of goods that looks incredibly different from what actually should make a hunter-gatherer type person happy. I mean, we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, sure, but, you know, just having a lot of riches doesn't really necessarily make you wealthy. And there's a lot of people who are rich that would argue that. Uh, and they would probably argue it pretty well, and they would probably argue it very aggressively. And I would also posit that the person who's wealthy versus the person who is rich, the wealthy person would cede the argument sooner than the person who is rich would. And that also goes back to character. And I think wealth is a character trait rich being rich is just a label it's not an inherent persona I guess wealth wealth is a character trait wealth of character wealth of charisma wealth of habit wealth of positivity creativity wealth of um, ethic, you know, there's, there's different ways that it can be applied. Rich only applies to, well, rich. I mean, it applies to like, when you think of, when you think of a food that is rich, what do you think of? Chocolate, rich chocolate, um, you know, a rich dessert, a rich wine. You think of concentrated, okay? but it doesn't last. You eat it and it goes away. It doesn't last. You drink the wine with the rich chocolate, but it's over. It's passing. You can't think of a wealthy food, can you? Right. You know, so that's how they're different. And while it is good to learn from guys like Kiyosaki, and I need to go ahead and say that none of this is meant to be to 
derogatory towards him. I'm going to, I have for years, ever since Red Rich Dad followed his advice and a lot of his mantras and it's changed my life for the better. I just want to say that none of this is libel, none of this is slander. All of it is to merely point out that if you're not careful, you can fall into a mental mind trap and lose who you are and it'll all be for naught. So apply this to an area in your life like a drop in a bucket and let the ripple effect of what you learn from what he's given you through the gift of words and knowledge and let that help you but don't let it change you because if you let it change you I don't think you'll become wealthy if you drop everything and do everything that he's done you will absolutely become rich but you will lose yourself in the process and Rich Dad Poor Dad is a great book to read um, and I highly recommend it but anyway that's sort of my brief overview of the difference between wealthy and rich and how we need to focus on the school system, um, how we how we can make, a great, make America great again and not in the Donald Trump way and, um, you know, build back better. That's a whole other discussion, you know, are we actually going to tear it down? I mean, a lot of stuff is falling apart and let's be honest, it does kind of need to be torn down, but... If we're going to build back better right now, the quality of some of the stuff that's going to be built back is not going to be great um, because of the, the material and the manufacturing. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not a pretty picture. So let's, uh, yeah, let's be careful if we do that also. And um, anyway, I, I think that's really it for the bonus video. I enjoyed waxing philosophical with everyone. So thanks for tuning in as always. Please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps the algorithm and it's going to help me out. And uh, I think uh, I think I'm going to start looking into doing more with the channel, especially if I keep getting more and more support like I have been. So um, if anyone out there has got video editing skills or can help set up, uh, who, who can help me with my Patreon and, and can help me with my Rumble and can help me with you know, increasing my avenues of getting out there and creating an income for ourselves, please let me know. Um, I have other ventures that I'm focusing on, such as uh, creating another LLC and investing in real estate and creating incomes out here in the real world and not in Black Mirror world. So just let me know reach out I would love to um, you know love to involve somebody else in that in this beautiful journey so peace and love everybody enjoy enjoy the day that you are watching this and enjoy uh, enjoy the fruits that the knowledge can help grow uh, within your mind whole brain anyway enough of that goodbye for now and see you on the next one